Hi, I'm Justin, G0KSC of Innova Antennas and the G0KSC.co.uk website. You'll also see some of my work in Dubus magazine and the ARRL antenna book. So today I wanted to cover off uh, the uh, seven element array at W7EW, which consists of six of the seven element WOS LFA Yagis stacked one above the other on a 150 foot fully rotating tower. So it's quite a monster system. It's one of these that uh, is one of the first to be heard when there's a big opening, especially from the west coast to Europe, which is a, a relatively rare event and only normally happens in the summer months in June. Um, so I wanted to look at that, show you what the uh, the pattern is, how the stack looks, and then also some uh, visualization as well. So we'll start off um, by uh, looking at some of the uh, the pictures of uh, of that array, um, which I will have up in just a second for you, uh, and then go on to the um, the uh, system itself. Now here, first off. This is from a, a bottom view once the system is installed and as you can see it's, it's quite an impressive looking antenna system from beneath. Now as you can see this is a, a, a lattice tower and there are guy rings. All of the guy rings are, have actually got bearings in them and then there's a, a motor at the bottom with a chain uh, which will turn all of the lattice tower. So all of those antennas uh, can be turned in any direction. So look, look from another view here. This is straight underneath all of the um, the flat loop uh, driven elements, and you can see one of the traits of the seven element WOS is the slightly bent forward reflectors, which helps to enhance front to back ratio uh, and also flatten uh, the uh, SWR stroke impedance curve too. And then finally, uh, on the uh, the photo front. This is from a, a little bit further back and you can see uh, all the way from the bottom antenna to the top. Um, it's about 155 feet to the very top of the mast uh, and uh, the bottom one is, is around um, 9 meters, so latter 20s in terms of feet above the ground. Um, there are some traits with something like this. Obviously it works uh, very well and gives a, a great deal of gain. Um, and I've got this into Easy neck, and if you haven't got Easy neck or you haven't seen this, it's worth having a look at uh, some of the earlier Easy neck videos. You can get a, a demo version from uh, Easy NEC uh, dot com. Uh, there's a, a, a demo version, there's some of the cheaper versions, and a, a pro version on there as well, which this is. Uh, so always good to support the developers where you can. So opening the system in here. Uh, we've got uh, six of these antennas uh, that are all stacked here uh, in the uh, in the display with the bottom one being the nine meters and then they're 7.1 meters apart. It's not so easy to see with all of the segmentation dots uh, and uh, wire numbers. So if I take all of those off and now I zoom in, you can see better the antennas layout and just by dragging, clicking and then dragging the mouse around I can orientate uh, to wherever I want to be. Now that 7.1 meter spacing ended up being about uh, where it needed to be uh, to give the, the, the nicest cleanest pattern for all of those being connected together. So if I uh, do the, the run it takes a little bit of time because we've got it now in a step size of 0 0.1 degrees uh, as well as uh, having uh, a very um, large amount of elements to, uh, uh, to be doing the calculations over. So this is the, uh, the, the first plot with all of the antennas aligned. You can see the front to back is extremely high. Um, uh, directly above the antenna, it's well below 40 dB, which is important because that's also going to be mirrored below. Whilst this is, being, uh, this is showing a plot that's above ground, so the ground reflections and ground gain mean that all, all we see is what's above here. The field strength of any of these corresponding um, lobes is going to be also in the down facing direction as well. 
So having that highly suppressed here at this point is uh, at this is going to make a difference. So when you um, you now look at the the forward lobe, you can see that the elevation angle is 2.6 degrees. So that's going to be great for dx, uh, and it's also showing here 24.47. Uh, dB of, of gain including the ground gain so it's, it's quite an impressive and quite a gainy system the problem with that is that whilst that's going to be very good for F2 it's and um, it, it's perhaps not going to be so good for uh, some of the nearer skip distances where you would want to have um, e-propagation or maybe um, meteor scatter there's still plenty of gain on the lower um, these lower lobes here that are way way down on the main lobe uh, to give you some sort of activity but there are some things that we can do if you have something like a, a stack match connecting all of these antennas together um, more than just the traditional fixed splitters which can make a difference and I'll show you how to model to replicate those differences when we go into sources here these sources are the red dots or red circles which are each of the feed points. Let's just take off the the current lines, which is the pink lines, which shows you uh, the intensity of current in any one of the given elements. So now we can see easier the, the red circles here. And each of these correspond with a particular uh, driven element on each of these antennas as we go up. So if I were to look at the, the phase in uh, degrees on this, and I were to put the top three antennas 180 degrees out of face. So effectively they're uh, reverse wired compared to the bottom three. Let's see um, what occurs when uh, we run make that run plot now. Now bearing in mind it, this is something that would be considered as an accident or that would reduce uh, performance if you had a two stack. But when you've got a stack like this um, it can have some associated benefits. You can see that the the out and out gain has dropped slightly, but the main lobe has now lifted up to 6.3 degrees. So that's it's almost uh, well it was 2.6. So it's quite a difference in uh, what that's been able to achieve for you. So having that ability to be able to switch uh, the top and bottom set out of phase uh, does make quite a difference as well. Another advantage of something like a stat match is if we were to, uh, say, take off um, all of the top antennas, so let's delete from 2 onwards, so now only the bottom antenna is connected. What I will do this time is I'm going to re-enable the, uh, the current profiles in each of the antennas so you can see what happens. So in this particular instance, we're only going to be uh, operating with the bottom antenna. So just put that aside for a second. Let's show the current lines. And now you can see that while there is um, very, very small amounts of currents in the, uh, the, the antennas above, everything, pretty much everything, is sitting in this bottom antenna. So what we have as far as a lobe is concerned is one main forward lobe and then one very large uh, secondary lobe um, but of course now the, the main cursor angle is 9.3 and if we look at uh, the, the first the second lobes uh, we were 13.74 so much more appropriate you obviously it's way way down on gain um, but it's much more appropriate for using a propagation mode such as e-layer propagation so let's have a look now if uh, we delete from 3 onwards so we just have the bottom two antennas in play and we can do this with any combination. It could be the uh, bottom two, the middle two, or the top two, or the top three, bottom three, or whatever you want to do. But the, the stat, something like a stat match really gives you a, a great deal of flexibility to be able to really get the most out of an array like this. So now this is on the, uh, the, the bottom two antennas. You can see the current distribution through those two antennas. And now a much more respectable 20.55 um, dB of gain. But of course you've now got the cursor angle at 6.2. So when you consider that uh, by, by uh, putting the top three out of phase, um, you can achieve 23.5 dB at 6.2 uh, 
uh, elevation angle, there's not a great deal of benefit from having just that, those bottom two. So basically you can experiment with any of these, any of these configurations. So let's just have a look at what the, the middle two will do. So I'm going to take off um, one to two. So they're removed and we can see that the, uh, the bottom two dots have gone. Uh, and then delete uh, three and four. And now um, you can see if you look at the display, the feed points have disappeared from the top two feed points have disappeared from the bottom two and now it's just a case that the middle two antennas are in use and the run is just coming to the end of its uh, uh, of it so there we are uh, so now we've got um, 3.1 degrees um, uh, as a elevation angle for that main lobe but we've got two secondary lobes which are, uh, are coming into play here as well which would give you other um, avenues of coverage now just at this point, um, I, I think we're, we've gone about as far as we need to go on this uh, this demonstration here. But just a, a point of reference and a point of note uh, about uh, angle of radiation. There's two things that uh, affect the angle of radiation, or or this. Uh, I say the angle of radiation. It's it's where the gain is going to be for receiving signals as well. And one of those in the predominant player is height above ground. Uh, the second one is boom length so the distance between the first and last elements in the array and as you as you increase a given sized yagi or stack above ground you will start to get this pattern break up as you noticed uh, when we had the bottom two we had two lobes now we've got these one these two, these middle two which are higher above ground it's broken into three main lobes and then if we were to do the top uh, two it would break down again. Let's just, um, while we're talking, I'm just going to put those uh, top two into play. So, um, delete one to four and run that. Um, so, what you have to do in order to, to um, remove or reduce that pattern breakup is as you increase the height of an array, you need to increase the boom length or stack. Uh, antennas in order to achieve that. So now you can see we've got the top two antennas which are very high, great deal of pattern breakup now and that's going to give you deep nulls. So when you're seeing um, uh, E-layer propagation or F2 for that matter, um, as those signals are progressively moving uh, up and down through layers uh, moving up and down in the atmosphere and signals twisting and turning, you're going to see very large amounts of Q, QSB in between as it moves in and out of those uh, lobes that you're receiving. Whereas obviously the, the ideal would be to have one very smooth lobe. And that's why commercially with a lot of the uh, commercial receiver or over the horizon radar systems, uh, they will have individual receivers connected to each of these antennas in order that um, uh, signals that would be between lobes in, in one configuration are on the middle of a lobe on another configuration and by via computer and software uh, all of those are combined in order to remove any and all um, QSB in in, uh, in that respect. So that's the W7 EW array quite an impressive system and this one has been in place and still operating since 2011 so um, a really cool system indeed. If you need uh, any help with such an array, uh, do um, ask in the questions below. If there's anything else that you'd like to see, ask in the, uh, the comments section below as well. Uh, and I'll be happy to um, perhaps do a, 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 another video on another subject that's similar to this one, or um, uh, maybe get some ideas on uh, what it is that would be commonplace that people would like to see um, from a, a stack perspective or other. And, uh, and we'll go from there. So thanks very much again for watching and uh, see you again soon.